In this video, we learn to express the absolute value as a piecewise defined function. Now you're probably familiar with what the absolute value does to individual numbers. For example, the absolute value of three is just three. When the absolute value sees a positive number, it just leaves it alone. But when the absolute value sees a negative number, so the absolute value of negative three, it's going to basically erase that minus sign. So the absolute value of negative three is three. Now one special case we have to be concerned with is the absolute value of zero, which is just zero. But what happens when we want to express the absolute value as a function of x, where x can be any real number? Well, that's what it looks like. We're going to give it the name f of x, and it's the absolute value of x. So we can start to play around with this thing with some individual inputs. For example, f of three, that just means the absolute value of three, which of course is just three. f of negative three is the absolute value of negative three. So that's three, the minus sign has been erased. And again, we have this special case of f of zero, and that's the absolute value of zero, which again is zero. So how do we go about expressing this function as a piecewise defined function? What we're going to do is split into two different cases. When x is a non-negative number, meaning when it's positive or zero, the absolute value function is going to leave it alone. So f of x is just equal to x, as long as x is greater than or equal to zero. In other words, whatever you put into this function, the same exact thing pops out, provided it's non-negative. Now we have to treat the case where x is less than zero, in other words, when x is negative. And we know the absolute value just erases the minus sign. But we need to express this as an algebraic operation. We can't just say erase the minus sign. So we have to think, what's the algebraic operation that we've done, say in this case, for f of negative three? in order to turn it into three? And the answer is we multiplied it by negative one. So when the absolute value sees a negative number, it multiplies by negative one. So we can finish our piecewise defined function like this. When x is less than zero, the absolute value of x is the negative of x. So when the absolute value function sees a negative three, it multiplies it by negative one and we obtain a positive three. So now we have the absolute value function defined as a piecewise defined function valid for all real numbers. And this means we can make a graph of this function. So first we restrict ourselves to the non-negative case. So when x is zero or to the right of zero, and in that case, f of x is equal to x. Well, that's just the line y equals x that has a slope of one and passes through the origin. So there's the right half of the absolute value function. And we can see on here, for example, that if we plug in x equals three, that's connected to a y value of three. In other words, the absolute value of three is three. Next, we consider the negative case. When x is less than zero, f of x is equal to negative x. That's the line y equals negative x, which has a slope of negative one and would pass through the origin if our domain wasn't restricted to being strictly less than zero. So there's a picture of that half line. And again, we can see on this graph what we already know algebraically. If x is negative three, I go and look for the y value connected to that, and it's positive three. So this is the characteristic graph of an absolute value function. And we can start to play with this thing by shifting it to the right or left, up or down, stretching it vertically or horizontally, reflecting it vertically, but it's always going to have this unique shape of a V. If you enjoyed this video or at least found it useful, check out another one by clicking one of the links on the left or click the Zach's Lab logo on the right to explore dozens of physics and math playlists. As always, you can leave your questions, comments, and requests in the comments section below, and I'll get back to you within 24 hours. Thanks for watching Zach's Lab, and best of luck on your math and physics journey.